Um, I want to say hello again to everyone. My name is Daniela Dolenets. I've been uh, given today the role of moderator for this um, second panel, which I think will open uh, other important aspects of the conversation that we're having. Uh, in the spirit of what Igor just said, where we were supposed to link all the topics together and maybe go back and forth in terms of uh, what are the important issues, I wanted to uh, start this um, panel by referring directly to the last one, uh, where it seemed to me that when we were drawing the conclusions, one thing kind of was left uh, hanging, and that is the fact that um, I would say that uh, listening to what people were saying, um, I would say nationalism is still the defining force of politics in the region, at least for some of the countries. And I think we have to um, not go, you know, try and circle around this fact. I think this is not only because it's, uh, it complicates the picture, so that means it's part of the solution. We have to factor it in uh, the conversation that we're having. But also because um, left progressive movements in the region, uh, you know, initially articulated themselves through the critique of nationalism, through anti-war movements, through uh, fight against discrimination of minorities and, and, and th for, through the fight for human rights. And I think this is uh, also if we're talking about segmented struggles and trying to kind of reconnect them back together, uh, again, this is something that we cannot avoid. Um, this particular panel um, is entitled In Defense of the Commons, and I have here uh, six guests who represent organizations uh, from the region which are doing important work in defense of, of both what we call public goods or services and the commons. And our, our idea today is um, to say something about the as we've already heard, advancing uh, privatization and commodif commodification of diverse social spheres, but also to try and do as much as possible on um, talking about how the concept of the commons can help us, uh, help us analyze problems, can help us uh, criticize dominant relations, uh, encourage autonomy both from the market and from the state, and um, um, simply offer us a vocabulary for a certain control over community resources. This is what we will try to, to talk about today. As I said, I have uh, six panelists, some of which will be speaking in the local language. Uh, so those of you who um, uh, are not comfortable, I would ask you all to, to take the translation um, uh, mechanism. Uh, in terms of working rules, they have all uh, been asked to speak for five minutes, after which we have an open debate, and then again we will try to uh, draw some joint positions, uh, for which um, uh, Tomislav Medak, who is our first speaker, will also uh, be in the, in the role of um, concluding remarks, which is why we have him uh, speaking first. So please, Tomislav from Multimedia Institute in Croatia. I can give you the mic. Yeah. Hello, everybody. So I'm going to read, I'll, I'll try to read quick. I have more than five minutes to read, but yeah, I'll try to do it quick. So I'm going to speak about privatizations, com commercialization, and enclosures. We've recently seen the commons becoming the credo of social struggles. It has become a metonymic rallying cry for social movements, crystallizing the comprehensive experience of their struggles, as it brings together the economic aspects of struggle against propertization against commodification and for equitable economic provisioning with the social aspects of collective management of resources and new forms of collective organization. However, that perspective is not enough to fully understand and start transforming the contemporary capitalism. We will continue to need the critique of political economy, macroeconomic analysis, political analysis of domination on all scales in order to come there. Still, I want to argue that there is a systemic nature to this, to this credo, and that neither of those other entry points can either fully understand and transform or start transforming the contemporary ca capitalism without taking into account the perspective of the commons. Before I do that, I want to expand the operative understanding of the commons, of the concept of the commons. That is, uh, that is an expanded definition that hopefully isn't disingenuous to the perspective that struggles themselves take. For all intents and purposes, I'll lump together public goods and commons. I'll even lump together public services with public goods and commons. This is contestable, but we can discuss it later. While each of these would deserve a careful analysis in its own right, all of them share one contemporary dynamic, and this is, I think, crucial. They are increasingly being encroached 
by the processes of propertization and commodification in their various forms and guises. In fact, this has been a common development in the societies of former Yugoslavia and in many other places uh, of former socialist East. Over the last three decades or so, we have seen the property forms being redefined and property relations being transformed over and over, with ever-growing levels of dispossession and disenfranchisement of the citizens and the disregard for the environment. The process of ever-growing appropriation of what were formerly in socialist times collectively managed social goods and worker-managed economy is in its third or fourth iteration. The gradual introduction of marketing economy in the Yugoslav period, largely criminal privatizations of the early 90s, sell-off of real estate assets of bankrupted companies and assault on space in the Nords, and hailing privatizations of public and common resources and public services now in the recessionary tense. Privatizations, commercializations, and enclosures are a common experience. But as I've said, they are not only symptoms, they also have a systemic nature that I want to address here briefly. I want to argue that we should not judge the struggles for common from their particular and local nature, perceiving them primarily through the lens of serving to ease the effects of and thereby potentially obscure the systemic workings of neoliberal capitalism. We should not judge them through the lens of not in my backyard, pastoral par and parochial forms of struggle for romanticized ways of life that are now being taken away from middle classes. Those struggles are often seen as conserv conservationist and sometimes not unjustified, I must say, um, outright conservative, and can to a degree be understood ex as exemplary of the contemporary disorientation of the, of the left in its conservative conservationist reflex as it finds itself confronted with the loss of historically achieved standards of social welfare, the eroding political import of unionized labor, and the detrimental effects of austerity measures being deployed across Europe in the aftermath of financial and ensuing public debt crisis. While we can hear from all corners and comment commentators of all stripe that the current crisis is systemic and that it is cyclical crisis of capitalism, indicating that the problem rests with capitalism as a mode of production, we should not fail to notice the systemic role that the commodification of resources, such as developable land or housing or education or science, has played in the ascendancy and specific morphology of the current crisis and the inflation of speculative bubble. And we should particularly not fail to notice the opportunities that commodification of such resources provides for further accumulation by dispossession. While the laws of motion of capital are uniform and recurrent, they produce fragmentation, difference, and discord between dispossessed social groups, effectively foreclosing the potential for a wide hypothetically class-based mobilization. Lately, we've seen, uh, much to that effect, the, ideolo the ideological thrust of this fragmentation in the creation print news reporting, which makes a picnic out of pitting real sector workers against public sector workers, against farmers, against cultural workers, against students, basically pitting everyone against everyone who finds themselves in the pinch. Hence, the rallying together of heterogeneous constituencies and contradictory ideologies around particular and local resources reflects that social fragmentation wrought by capital process, capitalist processes. The dependence of society on such resources for non -com so it sorry, uh, it reflects also the dependence of society on such resources for non-commodified access to basic social goods and the particular and local nature of capital accumulation, and signals to resources as a site where the struggle between the atomized community and the pervasive process of capital accumulation effectively unfolds. The resources be they commons, public goods, or public services, where the perspectives of environment, social reproduction, and cultural reproduction that find themselves under the extreme assault of commercialization, privatization, and enclosure. I want to point out some socioeconomic features of these processes of enclosure. First feature is cuts in the public spending 
are not just cutting on public services. They are also opening room for expansion of capital, as profit-seeking capital, confronted with falling production and returns, is pushing to expand into non-market resources, commodifying provisioning of fundamental social goods and services such as water, electricity, health, education, culture, etc., etc. Um, one should also note to that that markets are exclusionary, exclusionary in their nature in provisioning. They exclude by geography, as we know, but they also exclude by buying, economic buying power. Um, if it needs to be inclusionary and egalitarian, we often find out that it's to the detriment of uh, public accounts or public uh, um, fiscal resources. Um, good example here, for instance, in, in what concerns uh, intellectual goods are libraries and ebooks. Ebooks have made basically the role of libraries as providers or uh, buffer against the exclusion of the market um, ineffective. You can control the number of lending with ebooks and you don't have basically a good to archive. Um, so, second, extraction of monopoly rent or extra profit by capitalization of resources of intense social interaction uh, that also is reflected in the crowding out of non-commodified dom domains of social reproduction by capital. For instance, we can see that how, it, how this unfolds in also again domain of digital commons um, where monopoly of copyright creates also the monopoly rent of um, commercial entities such as uh, academic publishers, which extort profits of 35% for decades and decades with rising prices of 300% over three decades. So that's one example. Um, but we can see also that kind of uh, monopoly uh, rent behavior when we see the seizures of uh, particular coastal locations in Croatia, uh, or squares being colonized with commerce and high-end developments. Uh, and one should also say that these pro projects are not making jobs, they are rather raising profits. That's the, uh, the point of, of extra profit or monop monopoly rent. Third, predatory and criminal processes of enterprise and capture of political decision-making process are also uh, visible in this. Um, uh, we can see also that uh, for that purpose, economically viable production sex sectors are being gutted, as was recently the example here with the Kamensko uh, textile factory, which was bankrupted basically for the purposes of, um, of uh, appropriating the assets, uh, which are based very in a, on a very local, a very central location in Zagreb. Uh, fourthly, state serves as a facilitator of economy quite profit maximization, using typical neoliberal economic tools that more often than not end in mismanagement. Privatizations, public-private partnerships, public debt, uh, creative fiscal circumvention instruments, uh, and changes of regu regulation. We've recently seen um, a number of developments in Croatia for uh, handball European championships. They built uh, a number of arenas throughout the smaller cities uh, and Zagreb as well in Croatia that public funds have to uh, return the money for for the next 25 years and in some cities it's 16 percent of uh, the local budget so there you go though they already had arenas yeah that's um, so I want to also outline certain normative um, prospects for Tom, struggles Tom, for the commons. I'm sorry because we are very pressed yeah, for time. I'm finishing. Yeah. So uh, first is, uh, I think, the issue of st sustainability, which throws up the issue of management and also throws up the question of development and economic development. Is economic development a viable model? Uh, second is diversity and heterogeneity, equality and solidarity, and new forms of social organization. We should bear in mind heterogeneous social composition, very different groups with very, very different ideologies that come together and have to do something. Um, and I also, as a last point, I want to uh, stress that we need to come to socialized and contextual, uh, contextualized knowledge, that understanding general processes might not be enough, it's important, but we also need analysis of legal arrangements, institutional makeups, compositions of social forces, stakeholders, detractors, 
allies, and sometimes we need escalations as well. Okay, thank you very much. I'm sorry to have this, I have this uncomfortable role of policing the time. We have six speakers and we, are, uh, we have a fixed deadline to finish at 3.15. So for this purpose, I will ask my other panelists to try and stick to the uh, around five minutes. If I can very, you know, in a simplified way, round up a few things that uh, Tomislav said, I would say um, you underlined or stressed that public services, public goods, um, the commons, so these are complex concepts that we all use to, to talk about uh, issues of importance. Uh, you've emphasized that they are all being encroached by the same uh, process. But also, I think you mentioned at the beginning, and maybe some of the panelists will come back to this, um, that um, using this vocabulary or language of the commons is not enough that, for a systemic criticism. And, and also that there is a tension between the commons and the public goods and, and so forth. But um, to introduce my next speaker, uh, Marko Aksentijevic uh, from Serbia, from an organization, I would translate, Who Makes the City? Yeah, here you go, you have five minutes. Uh -huh. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, a lot has been said about uh, the commons and uh, the public good in these past few days. Uh, given the time that I have, I cannot go into, uh, into certain details, so I would like to actually concentrate on, on a, a few points in, in regards to the question uh, Daniela posed, uh, and which I think are important for the, for the you know, struggles for the commons and the public uh, public goods, uh, and I mean these are all the things that that been out uh, throughout these days. But the, it's just the points that I find very important in this particular moment. Uh, as as we already been through the, the but I I think that the the main issue in the struggle is uh, a general lack of interest for the. Uh, for the public good, and uh, which is due to the the past that we had, and which basically uh, deregulated these these terms and and the ideas of of the common common goods and and, and the public goods. Uh, another obstacle is are the social issues, which are in the in the way of joining the the different struggles where. When you have a, a roof which lets the water in your house, it's hard to deal with the with the park in in front of the house. Uh, so, oh, in in the, this sense, uh, I would say in in Serbia, especially, I, I think in Croatia, there there's been a, a big progress in the sense of of the interest of of the people for the for the issues of of the commons and and the public goods. Uh, and I find that to be the, the uh, really the front. Uh, I I could agree that you know the, the mentioning the the commons and like you know bringing into the language is not is not enough. But I think it, at this uh, I would say early stage, given that the the rewind we had you know 20 years ago. It is important uh, to you know, to rebrand the, the you know, public goods and, and, and common goods uh, because they do have the potential of being something. And somebody mentioned that on the previous panel of being something not observed uh, through the ideology, which is so uh, so not uh, looked upon with the likelihood. So in, in that sense, I really think that the arguments which go along the lines that the, you know, the having the uh, accessible education is the is a pre basis for for having a debate on on every other is, social issue is something that the the, the wider public can understand uh, just as well as the having the public space uh, is the basis of of, of democracy because. I don't know, this is very recent in, in Belgrade. They started to n narrow streets so that they can make uh, more parking lots, and in, in that sense, and the, and the it's 0 0.7 meters is the is the city standard. And in that sense, once we lose the, the, the these spaces, we won't have you know where to protest for the for these issues. Uh, uh, so and uh, also, also yesterday, Giovanni was talking about the the examples of the lakes in Porto Alegre, and how the only ones that the first lake was depol depolluted, uh, they 
the public through the participatory budget uh, wanted to invest in the polluting of all the other lakes. So in that sense, I really think it's important to, uh, for all these struggles to, to you know, reach out to the people uh, and explain why, why, uh, why is this important and like wh why they should care. Uh, Tomislav yesterday presented uh, how it's done in, in Croatia. I think it's really, I mean, you know, looking from Serbia, I envy. I think it's really uh, uh, a good start, and uh, and it, it's uh, absolutely necessary for 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 the you know more serious struggle, no matter how radical it wants to be. Uh, I think that fits my four minutes, five minutes. This is so wonderful that I'm surprised. <laughs> um, thank you very much, Marco. Uh, Marco mentioned two specific arenas that uh, I think the panelists will return to. One is public space as a precondition for us to assemble and, and do things together, and the other is um, education. But the next two speakers uh, are from environmental uh, NGOs, environmental organizations, and I do hope they will also broaden our discussion um, in, in terms of other ways in which the developmental model that is currently dominant is unsustainable. Uh, the first will be Dušica uh, Radojčić uh, from Green Istria, from Croatia. And I also welcome another female voice, which have been very rarely heard today. Thank you. So I have brought here to you some example from uh, our local practice or experience. In the past 10 years of um, my activism, I have seen a high reproduction of injustices and environmental damages, of um, enclosure of commons everywhere, from community land to water resources, to public space subject to uh, pro-market spatial planning, uh, lives threatened, uh, people threatened by um, externalities of environmentally damaging um, industries or um, um, energy development projects uh, harmful for local community and meant for exporting energy. My struggle uh, have been, or our struggles, it's better to say, have been mostly about um, urban public spaces. These efforts, however important for us locally, are minor. I can realize that. But I am so glad to see that there are many, or not many, some, some, it's a better word, similar groups all over the country doing more or less the same thing. And we are in contact, and we are cooperating together. But what I can see is that the broader public, the, the broader audience in the country are not perceiving our actions as parts of a common bigger picture. And this I can see as a problem for establishing a future broader network of cooperation or network of, uh, of, of resistance. So what we have to do uh, is to uh, spread the idea of, the, of a common basis of all our actions that is currently uh, missing. Um, and I have brought two... Uh, I can see some obstacles also for creating this broader network, regional network. And I have brought some examples of those limitations that may be uh, that are coming from my practice. And I will talk only because of the time limitation about two of them. The first one is uh, related to, is about a struggle for a non-essential commons. Um, we have a, a modest capacity to in get involved people in our actions. Or there is a modest interest of others to participate in our actions. What is the cause of such a relatively um, small interest, small number of participants? As environmental organization, we are not going further than dealing with some environmental issues or public, urban public space. And those are not commons that are essential for anyone's livelihood. I mean, uh, how can you get involved people for something that is not in the focus of his interest? So this is our limitation. Um, problem 
dealing, for instance, and that's what we are doing recently with fencing off areas, are not crucial for anyone. So I think it is not uh, realistic to expect a large number of people uh, joining, joining us. And um, I have, uh, I have uh, heard recently about a research uh, done in Croatia, and we have one of the authors with us is Daniela. <laughs> And the preliminary results have shown that the environment is not priority in, in, for the people in Croatia. They have put, the Croatians uh, ha, have put uh, economy, poverty, health, and crime as priorities, and environment is at the bottom of the list together with um, terrorism and immigration, which are not outstanding problems in, in Croatia. And as I, as I and as if I have understood it well, one of the reasons for such opinion of the people in Croatia is because uh, educated people are among those who are treating environment as important issues, as an important issue. And uh, educated people are not a majority or a big group of people in, in Croatia. So that I can see as, as a problem. The other problem, I have given a name, uh, Italian word, campanilismo, or maybe I should say lack of solidarity. The word campanilismo doesn't have a specific uh, translation in, in, in English. It's an Italian word meaning a tower bell, and it's a symbol of uh, a love of one owns town, or even a part of the town. So it's um, gem more generally love, loving one's own neighborhood. What I have noticed in our local struggles, we have, for instance, at the present moment, few local initiatives campaigning for public spaces that are not meeting each other. I mean, they are separated action which do not cooperate. And we are a very small town, just 60,000 inhabitants. Can you imagine few? actions, few campaigns, they do not cooperate because uh, they have gathered, uh, so this is a kind of, of, of my conclusion, that a group of people will engage in a campaign for a common good only if uh, it's in their own neighborhood. And they will not join the action if it's in the neighborhood just a few hundred meters away. And that I can see as, as a problem. So I cannot say that this is a um, polycentric collective action. It is not. Those are separated actions which don't, do not meet at all. And I can see it as, as a problem for future uh, cooperation or networking at the higher levels. And, and the problem is that those group, groups disappear together with the problem. When the problem disappeared, the group disappeared. So for the moment, that would be all, and I'll join the discussion later. Okay, thank you very much. I'll, I'll pass the word directly uh, to Tomislav Tomasovic from um, Green Action, Friends of the Earth Croatia. Go ahead. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, okay, I'll speak more about the threats uh, that we see uh, about the comments in, in the Balkan and Croatia especially. Uh, but also about the relation between public goods and common goods as well. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to say that uh, uh, we see uh, now in Croatia the, the next level, as we call it, the next really level of privatization and after the factories which were, somebody would even describe it as a commons or as a social, uh, what, what Tommy said, the social uh, property or the social good which became the, the state good the public good, let's say, and then they were privatized and destroyed. And, uh, and this is happening basically also with the natural common resources right now. So we have a huge number of agricultural land and forests being privatized, being taken away from the communities, from the cooperatives, which we had before, and, uh, and they are also devastated, and uh, especially it's happening on the coast. And I showed uh, some of these examples yesterday on the discussion about the urban commons. Uh, these huge amounts of agricultural land are either being devastated for some uh, speculative construction projects for real estate market and uh, buyers of second homes uh, from uh, usually Western European countries, or uh, they are being privatized and, uh, and monopolized by few of the biggest companies in Croatia, 
uh, who are trying to buy as, as, more, as, as more agricultural land as possible. The second uh, attack on the natural common goods are happening also in the water system. And uh, here I want to maybe do a relation between the commons and the public goods and the frustrations which we have. So uh, there was an attempt in Croatia to uh, privatize Croatian Waters, which is a public company or a basic public institution uh, which manages uh, waters in Croatia. So it's still not uh, privatized like in some neighboring countries. Uh, but this was the first attempt to do so. Uh, and there was a speculation that it would be happening with American capital. Uh, and we, um, although we, we criticized this company for almost a decade in doing uh, projects which are harmful for environment, which are harmful for local communities, and these projects are being uh, given to the companies of the CEOs of this public company. So basically a lot of corruption is happening. Of course, we didn't want to allow that this public uh, institution becomes a private company, and then we lose uh, a control, a public control on the way how the water resources are managed in Croatia. So we uh, managed to get a wider coalition, and when I say wider, I'm not only speaking on the left actors, because there was also a Catholic church involved and some other actors as well, uh, which were against this uh, privatization of the Croatian waters. And we succeeded uh, without many protests uh, just in doing so. Uh, but then there's again this frustration, okay, we stopped the privatization of Croatian waters, but we still don't have influence on the way how these resources are managed. Uh, and, and there is still a lot of corruption, there is still a lot of damaging projects for local communities. And we hope that we will manage to get the public control over that public company, which would mean the way how these resources are managed. And here I see uh, some kind of uh, uh, opportunity for the common good concept, where uh, if, I, if I look also on the electricity and energy sector of Croatia, where there are also some uh, trends to privatize the, the Croatian uh, electrical company, uh, which, of course, we have to defend and we have to, we have to fight against it. But then again, I think there's also an opportunity for a common good concept in the energy sector as well. So, and I think these tactics uh, should be parallel. So fighting uh, for the protection of the public goods and trying to influence more public control over these public goods, but also uh, trying to see and diversify what are the common good concepts, uh, uh, especially for the local communities. So here, we, I think also that beside uh, uh, defending this public, comp this public sphere, we should also promote uh, uh, practices like energy cooperatives where the local communities actually become the owners of the projects, uh, energy projects where the citizens uh, associations uh, uh, engage in, uh, in this type of projects and they manage them for the benefit of their local community. So I think uh, this kind of, these two concepts Basic, and these two tactics should be parallel. So I think we should, because, because of this uh, problem that we are, we are, that we are uh, facing difficulties in controlling the public goods and the public sphere, of course we should defend the privatization of this concept, of these goods. We should also try to diversify and localize and introduce the common goods concept in the managing of these goods. Uh, so I'll stop here for now. Okay, thank you very much. From what I've understood, you're talking about the two things uh, as if going in parallel, but maybe, you know, another way of seeing this from what you've just said is seeing the, the concept of the commons as going beyond, so more in terms of democratization, democratic control, direct uh, governance by the people. So that will be kind of a step further from we are now facing you know, encroachment where we have to stop privatization and keep things in the public arena so that we have a right to discuss them. But the Commons draws us towards talking about how we, the people, you know, we the citizens, can be directly involved in, uh, in managing these uh, resources. Um, okay, and now we will switch. Um, our next speaker, Vladimir Simovic, is from an organization from Serbia called Center for the Politics of Emancipation, an organization which has just recently, uh, less than a month ago, organized a conference entitled Struggle for the Public Good. And um, so I'll give Vladimir the word. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, I would like first to apologize to everyone who don't speak uh, our language. Uh, you will have to use your headphones because I will speak in my native language. Uh, dakle, uh, 
S obzirom da je Levica u Srbiji dosta slaba, cilj naše organizacije koja se zove Centar za politike emancipacije je da svojim aktivnistima širimo ideje i otvaramo prostor za jačanje pozicije Levice u društvu. Takođe radimo na povezivanju različitih društvenih grupa koje se protive neoliberalnim politikama i upravo sa ovim ciljem smo u aprilu organizovali konferenciju koju je Danijela spomenula, dakle konferenciju Janu Dobru, Ideja je bila da se napravi neka vrsta sastanka, dakle jedno mesto razmeni iskustava i perspektiva različitih grupa koje se pozivaju na javno dobro. Dakle, samo bih sad napomenuo da javno dobro kao takvo nije naša primarna tema, dakle nije primarna tema kojom se bavi Centar za politike i emancipacije. Ipak imajući u vidu da u Srbiji postoji dosta grupa koje se u svojim borbama pozivaju na odbranu javnog dobra, Mi smo ovu temu uzeli kao tačku preklapanja različitih društvenih borbi i kao temu oko koje je moguće raditi na izgradnje jednog šireg fronta koji bi se efikasno suprostavio neoliberalnoj agendi. Tema javno dobro je takođe važna jer omogućava i povezivanje na nadnacionalnom nivou, naime borba za odbranu obrazovanja, penzijnog sistema i drugih za bazičnu društvenu reprodukciju važnih sektora, koje država sve više prepušta privatnom kapitalu i tržištu, dakle borba za odbranu ovih dobara odvija se širom sveta. Kada je sprovođenje neoliberalne politike u pitanju, dakle Srbija tu nije nikakav izuzetak, iako situaciju donekle zamagljuje odlaganje takozvane reforme javnog sektora, Izbori su se održali istog dana kada i u Grčkoj i u Francuskoj, dakle 6. maja, i sigurno je da će nova vlada, kogod da je formira, dakle koje god partije da je formiraju, napraviti jedan radikalan rez u javnom sektoru kako bi vođena neoliberalnom politikom smanjila budžetske izdatke. U svakom slučaju, osim nekada društvenih fabrika i preduzeća, tržištu su već uveliko prepušteni zdravstveni i obrazovni sistem, Javni prostor se takođe prepušta tržištu i krupnom kapitalu, a u poslednje vreme, dakle, na red su došli privatizacija komunalnih delatnosti. Otpori ovakoj politici postoje, ali su uglavnom nepovezani i bez podrške šire javnosti. Ono što smo mi mapirali kao neke tri borbe za javne dobra koje su vidljive na prostoru Srbije, to su pre svega studenski pokret koji se bori protiv komercijalizacije obrazovanja, sindikalni pokret koji se bori protiv privatizacije komunalnih delatnosti i različite grupe koje se bave pitanjem komercijalizacije i komodifikacije kulture i prostora. Studenti se aktivno organizuju već duže vreme. 2006. godine dogodila su se prve blokade fakulteta. Inače, svake jeseni dešavaju se manje ili veće mobilizacije koje su do duše kratkog daha i svake godine kreću iznova. One su postaknute konstantnim rastom školarina koje na nekim fakultetima dosežu cifru od nekoliko hiljada evra, što je, dakle, izuzetno velika cifra za državu u kojoj je prosečna plata 350 evra. Takođe, reforma visokog obrazovanja koju sprovodi država pokušavajući da implementira Bolonsku deklaraciju, puna je kontradiktornosti koje one mogućavaju normalno studiranje. Jasne prošle godine obeležili su dakle i protesti studenta i studenkinja Beogradskog univerziteta, blokade Filozofskog i Filološkog fakulteta u Beogradu, i pokušaj, bilo je čak i pokušaj mobilizacije, dakle širenja van Beograda, bilo je pokušaj mobilizacije studenta i u Novom Sadu, ali, dakle, ovi protesti su bili obeleženi i jakom represijom nad studentima, koja je prvo, dakle, pokrenuta od strane rektora, koji je u više navrata pretio i policijom, da bi nakon toga usledili direktni napadi fašističkih grupa. Važnost studenskog pokreta je bila pre svega to što se organizuju kroz direktno demokratski model organizacije i što dovode u pitanje komercijalizaciju i komodifikaciju obrazovanja. Ipak problem predstavlja to što su studenti na neki način zaglavljeni između zahteva za smanjenjem školarina i zahteva za besplatnim obrazovanjem. Takođe, dominacija neoliberalnih ideja u javnosti, ali i uvođenje rangiranja studenta, dakle, koji ima bolje pres, prosek, vratno će biti, preće biti na budžetu nego na samo finansiranje. Dakle, to rangiranje takođe narušava jednu solidarnost među studentima, pa je dodatno teško organizovati pokrt. Na jese prošle godine odigrao se jedan važan događaj na sindikalnoj sceni. Naime, organizovan je 
u neko, ne znam, u zadnjih x godina, možda i najmasovniji sindikalni protest. Po prvi put su na ulici izašli zajedno, dakle, sve sindikalne centrale koje su inače jako razjedinjene i, dakle, po prvi put su ujedinile oko istog cilja, a to je bilo, dakle, povlačenje predloga zakona o javno-privatnom partnerstvu u komunalnom sektoru. Zanimljivo je to da je ovaj zakon, dakle, da je ovaj zakon stavljen, došao u Skupštinu nakon što je privatni kapital već u neke komunalne delatnosti ušao. Dakle, ovaj zakon je bukvalno legitimizovao nezakoniti ulazak privatnih kompanija u komunalni sektor. Sindikati, nažalost, nisu uspeli da mobilišu širu javnost. Protest koji je okupio nekih možda desetak hiljada sindikalaca je prošao apsolutno nezapažen u medijima, ali njihov uspeh je bio to što su uspeli da sakupe 120 hiljada potpisa. U polju kulture, dakle, sve vidljivija je jedna scena koja artikuliše politiku koja se suprostilja komercijalizaciji kulture javnog prostora, ipak za sada tu nema neke šire mobilizacije. Dakle, ove tri grupe, dakle, sindikalci, studenti i ljudi iz sfere kulture, su bili neki naš fokus kada je u pitanju ova organizovanja te naše konferencije. I sad bi samo navio neke probleme koji su se pojavili prilikom povezivanja ovih grupa. To je pre svega različiti diskursi iz kojih dolaze, zatim birokratizovanost i centralizovanost sindikata, to što deo sindikalnog rukovodstva ne vidi interes u povezivanju sa neformalnim pokretima i manjim levim grupama, takođe podeljenost sindikalnog pokreta koja je više nego očigledna, i zatim i nepostojanje koherentnog studijenskog pokreta koji bi vodio kontinuiranu borbu. Ipak nama je bilo važno da napravimo taj jedan prvi korak u povezivanju i da izgradimo određenu solidarnost između ovih grupa. Predpostavljamo da će svaki naredni korak biti mnogo lakši i da se postepeno može raditi na izgradnje jednog šireg fronta za odbranu javnog dobra. Razdvojeni nismo uspevali da mobilišemo širu javnost, nismo uspevali da zahvatimo širu perspektivu, već smo ostali zatvoreni u našim poljima. Iako je pitanje odbrane javnih dobara akutno i važno za svakodnevni život ljudi, ono je i pitanje na neki način taktike stvaranja pokreta. Mi se pre svega moramo biti svesni da je definicija javnog dobra stvar društvenog koncenzusa političke i klasne borbe i borba za javna dobra u prvom trenutku jeste defanzivno karakter, ali moramo razmišljati na koji način pokrenuti ofanzivu. Ili imam još malo ili... Dakle, u tom smislu borbe protiv privatizacije komunalnih preduzeća, ali i protiv komercijalizacije obrazovanja nose određeni potencijal za početak. Zašto? Dakle, u delu javnosti i dalje, barem u Srbiji, i dalje dominira ideja da je upliv kapitala u ove sektore opasan. Takođe, u komunalnom sektoru radi nekoliko desetina hiljada ljudi čije radna mesta prosto mogu biti ugrožena privatizacijom a osiromašeni roditelji sve teže uspevaju da školuju svoju decu. Naravno, tu su takođe i zdravstvo, penzijni sistem i druga javna dobra, ali ako uspemo da napravimo neki prvi korak i možda pobedimo u nekoj od ovih borbi, pretpostavljam da bi dalja borba bila daleko lakša. I samo za zaključak, dakle, čini mi se da povezivanje grupa koje se bave odbranom javnih dobara može biti ključan faktor izgradnji fronta za borbu protiv neoliberalizma, ali izgradnju nove istinske demokratske antikapitalističke pozicije. Hvala. Thank you very much, Vladimir. I just wanted to just emphasize, I think, one of the last points that you said, which may be interesting to discuss further. If I understood you correctly, you uh, you said there is a public perception in Serbia according to which the introduction of capital into education in certain uh, public spheres is not welcome and is considered negative. And I would just emphasize this further from, you know, empirical studies that we have, at least of which I know for Croatia, um, the population of, of these countries does expect a lot from the state. We do have a tradition uh, and, a, and a, you know, historical kind of legacy 
of the state taking care of these domains. So there is something to work with in the kind of wider public support, which has been emphasized by a number of our speakers as, as problematic of how to, how to activate it. Okay, and now we move to our um, final speaker, Primoz Krasovac, from the Workers in Punks University from Slovenia, who will, uh, I think, talk also about um, the, the arena of education. Please go yeah, ahead. Uh, thank you. Um, I will try to plug some threads uh, that were um, uh, from other discussions, from uh, previous presentations, not from only this panel, uh, but also from other panels, from other days, and I will try to weave them into something at least uh, remotely uh, coherent. I, I, I would like to start with something uh, that might uh, seem like a terminological, uh, terminological pedantry, and maybe it is. Uh, but I think that neglecting uh, um, terminological precision can have very grave, uh, even political uh, consequences. So I think we should be very precise when we talk about uh, uh, public goods and common goods and common resources. We should be very precise and careful what do we mean by that, because if we, let's say, we talk about public good and we willingly or unwillingly accept this neoclassical definition of uh, uh, public good as non-rival, non-exclusionary, let's say this classical, neoclassical uh, definition. We basically use a uh, theory that was, uh, that was itself built as an apology to capitalism to try to present a critique of capitalism which is unproductive, to say the least. Uh, so, um, for example, you have these notions, also a notion of natural monopoly in neoclassical theory. You have this notion that, for example, water or, or railroads are even from a perspective of a rational, profit-maximizing entrepreneur better left in public hands because it, it doesn't make, um, it doesn't bring you any additional profit or it incurs too much, too much costs uh, um, to have like uh, separate railroads with separate private providers. So basically you leave uh, the extent of public sector or the extent of provision of public services to the mercy of this neoclassical neo -classical reason, while, for example, you, you, cannot, you cannot base any, any reasonable critique of, let's say, a privately owned textile industry or privately owned food industry or privately owned agriculture um, based on these this same, this same premises. And there is also a problem if you, if you base, let's say, your, your perspective uh, exclusively on finished goods. So if you talk only about goods, uh, but do not talk about production. And it's, it's the same problem if you talk uh, exclusively about common resources so you have only raw material uh, and you have a final product, but you don't have the most important element which lies in between, which is precisely the, the hidden abode of production. So I will, I will try to take, uh, take this perspective of production and uh, briefly, briefly sketch the, the relation or the dynamic, the dialectical tensions between uh, private and public sector in, in advanced or developed capitalism and then um, uh, what could be here the use of the notion of common, what could be its, uh, let's say, political, uh, political uh, utility. And, and my, main point, uh, my main thesis would be uh, that uh, the importance of the notion of commons, if, if they have any importance at all, is that they point beyond capital, not, not uh, reproducing this, this whole uh, public, uh, public, private, uh, dialectic, uh, which is characteristic of, of capitalism of, of uh, capitalism as such. So um, um, my, I would like to claim that uh, private and public are not so much uh, within the context of developed or late capitalism are not so much antagonistically posed, but mutually interdependent. Uh, so they, they depend on one another and mutually condition one another. So it is only in this uh, let's say, a state of crisis in these heightened tensions that crisis brings out these um, uh, attempts of budget cuts and austerity measures that they seem as antagonistic, but let's say in a more uh, peaceful or let's say in a boom, uh, in a boom part of boom bust cycle of, of capitalism, uh, they, they have basically more like uh, sy symbiotical, uh, symbiotical uh, relation. Whereas uh, the, the private sector takes on the role of, of uh, production as such, productions of uh, 
material, but also uh, immaterial, immaterial commodities, which are um, production which is organized in a classical uh, capitalist sense with exploitation of labor, whereas uh, the worker works more, uh, more time or produces more value that he's given, uh, um, uh, that he's uh, um, uh, um, given, in, uh, given back in a, in a form of age and, and so on. And then you have a public sector which, without, let's say, uh, a conscious political pressure or, let's say, conscious leftist activist intervention, tends towards the pure, reprodu uh, pure social reproduction of labor power. So public sector, public sector basically serves as a, as a sector of socialization of costs of reproduction of labor power. So basically private capital can dump the costs of, uh, of reproduction of labor power such as, uh, such as health education because you need to have healthy and uh, at least relatively skilled people to be able to do the work that uh, uh, private capitalist uh, uh, productive sector demands. So from this perspective, which is still a perspective Perspective, um, um, uh, perspective of capital, uh, pa private sector really is productive and in a sense public sector really is unproductive, unproductive in a sense that is not immediately, it doesn't produce surplus value, but it produces necessary conditions uh, for the reproduction of, 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 um, of um, of labor power. So this, this is, this is uh, very important to, to keep in mind, uh, to not fall to a temptation to romanticize the, the really uh, sometimes trade unions, at least in Slovenia, do, a, t a tendency to romanticize uh, a really existing public sector, which has a lot of really existing problems, a lot of really existing difficulties, which at least in my opinion originate from that, that it, from its structurally subordinated uh, role in capitalist society to the needs, demands, uh, and accounting, accounting needs of, of uh, private, uh, private uh, capitalist, uh, capitalist uh, um, uh, production. Um, so basically, just, just to sum up, let's say, this relationship in a, in a very broad uh, outline, uh, public sector basically depends on, on private sector, uh, because private sector, through taxes, through um, uh, public capturing of a part of surplus value produced in, a, in private sector and its distribution uh, um, through, the, through the mechanism, through fiscal mechanisms, uh, public sector relies on private, on private sector for its source of finance or uh, financial income, while private sector relies on public sector as a so socialization of costs of uh, reproduction of labor power on the one hand, and which is especially pronounced in, in times of crisis as a reservoir of value, as a, as a reserve storage of value which, which can be tapped into, for example, to bail out banks, to, to, uh, to tap into, let's say, state budgets to bail out uh, private banks, which was an obvious, obvious process in the, in the, in the um, current crisis. And now um, I would like to take one, one concrete activist or or a political example of how can, how can public sector be seen not only as a site of reproduction of labor power or purely or exclusively of reproduction of labor, or to put it more precisely, of reproduction of human beings <coughs> as labor power, which is at the same time, of course, production and, and reproduction and shaping of human beings as mere labor power to be, to be available for, for uh, for uh, varying exploitation needs of the of the capitalist production, and this is this is precisely the 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 example of faculties of arts and humanities, and this is also the reason why why I think uh, the struggles there are are. Um, have more importance, more, more political value, even beyond the, the of course, immediately, uh, immediately percep um, um, uh, perceptible uh, political importance, which is, of course, the, the abolition or stopping of tuition fees, stopping of these uh, very crude, very, very immediate pressures to, to commodify and commercialize, uh, um, commercialize uh, university or higher education. But there is also, there is also another dimension 
a very, very, very visible, uh, uh, so very pronounced social process, which is uh, or a very obvious social fact that faculties of arts and, and humanities tend to be the biggest, the most popular, uh, um, the most popular faculties in, in developed capitalism. So you have masses of people who, who enroll, who want to study, uh, as say, uh, philosophy, history, art, art history, and so on, these topics, which are the same topics that from the, from the perspective of capitalist productivity or from the, uh, from the uh, perspective of uh, public sector of, uh, as mere reproduction of labor power are of course completely redundant. So you have another, another dimension of struggle beyond these immediate demands which are of course uh, um, primary and, and, and very important which is precisely the struggle over, over the definition and over the way of organizing the, the so, social production or the way of transforming, uh, uh, let's say, public sector institution or reorganizing them to become immediately, to become immediately productive and productively, productive not in this classical capitalist sense, so not productive in, in a sense of producing surplus value, but in this classical, let's say, Marxian or, or communist definition, uh, productive of actually existing historical, uh, historical human needs. So you have, you have this... Primoz, um, Primoz I'm yes. sorry, but if you could draw towards a conclusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, have, you have this very pronounced expression of, of a really existing human need for, let's say, education that is not education uh, uh, strictly, strictly for work, strictly to be productive, of, of uh, surplus value, and on the other hand, you have to, you have spontaneous, let's say, spontaneous resistance in the very form of people studying and reading books, not not to become productive laborers, but to develop themselves as as uh, uh, co let's say a completely developed personalities. To use this Marx phrase, so I think this is the element of struggle that is worth pointing out from that perspective. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to have uh, cut uh, your exposition short. We are. I'm, I'm afraid very short of time. And the idea was for this not to be a classical panel where you will hear people speak, but rather where you will be able to kind of say something. So I hope we provoked enough reactions. I see Tony and then Deepa and then okay, Jan. Very concise. Yes, please. All the you know all the replies to be very concise. Tony. Do we get the mic or reach out? Oh yes. I'm sorry. Somebody. Can you can you pass that? Uh -huh. Yeah. If I'll just say what Primo sh said is, uh, is is was a part of the conclusion, an important part of the May Day conference we had in in, in Ljubljana recently, and and uh, the question there was to put it in, in even more blunt terms, the better world or the better world is possible or even the better world is desirable is absolutely not good enough to develop struggles. Uh, because what we struggle against are macroeconomic concepts, categories, and measures. And there are two ways we need to battle them, and I think it's quite clear from not just from Primor said or from what, what I said, it was the whole conclusion of Ljubljana, and a lot of people are writing on this, is we need both macroeconomic measure for the reproduction of, of society from the angle of the worker, citizen, unemployed, student, from the pensioner, on one hand, how to actually show it in tables and statistics and what do we measure and how. On the other hand, the unmeasurable, what, what Primoz said, which is the, the actual production of capacity to think and to be active citizen, which is for the concept of direct democracy, of course, absolutely essential. So these are two, I think, aspects that, that we need to problematize and in future think about. Thank you. Stipe. So um, I wanted to, to add one, one aspect to, to also Primoz's which I think um, he raised some very important points, and I think it is very important uh, to know that uh, the historical role of the public sector as it has existed in the welfare state and so on, that is that uh, in, in, its, uh, in its primary function from capitalist perspective, it is to, um, to uh, transfer the reproduction of labor power onto the public. But very important, a very important aspect is under neoliberal conditions, uh, um, uh, there, there has been a, an important change in this, that the cost of reproduction of labor power are even further, uh, uh, are, are further uh, transferred further down to the immediate, uh, to the workers themselves, in the sense of to the, uh, there is this tendency to, to transfer the costs of reproduction of labor power towards the family unit and the individual. And that's, that is an important aspect of privatization, 
because uh, not only are uh, become uh, are, um, is, are aspects of the private uh, of the public sector becoming private as as, as um, profit maximizing units, but also uh, that entails also for for, for many workers that their um, that the cost of reprodu reproduction of their own labor power are privatized in the sense of they are become uh, becoming private problems on the, or they are framed as private problems. That is no longer as a social or political question, but the question of one's own efficiency or uh, one, one's own human capital, one's capabilities uh, to, to um, competitively um, um, uh, achieve through market mechanisms uh, to achieve one's own reproduction and reproduction of one's own um, family. So I think that that, that um, is also an aspect that we, we have to be aware of. Okay, Jana is behind you. You have the mic. Can you pass it on to the lady behind? Yeah, I know, but she, yeah, she was before. Okay, thanks. Um, I will uh, say something which is perhaps a rehashing of what has already been said, but I think it's useful to remind uh, that the, um, the focusing on the dichotomy between private and public can obscure a question which is uh, genealogically, if you wish, older, and that is the class reproduction, or rather the social reproduction of class inequalities. Um, focusing on education, the question of access to free education is perhaps the first question, but it's not the only question, and it's not perhaps even the most important one, because it obscures questions such as what kind of edu, who gets access to which kind of education, what is taught, and finally, I think the most important question, which is um, to what kind of life or to what kind of existence access to certain kinds of education entitles one. So I think that is something we should bear in mind. Okay, thank you. The gentleman in front. Yeah, uh, I would just like clarification from Primoz. Um, you mentioned that in the developed countries there is this uh, redundant um, category of students with regards to arts and humanity. Um, I, I, can you explain why do you consider them redundant? Because the arts and humanities, I believe, are the ones that are um, seeking jobs in marketing and in social engineering and uh, general social, social studies. And uh, according to my information, like the biggest percentage of capital investment into education is exactly in that sector. Um, I agree with Stipe and with another colleague, so I, won't, I will not reply. I, I agree with you both. So I'll just reply uh, to the question. Um, yes, of course. I mean, uh, I was thinking about, uh, let's say, a classic figure of, uh, say, philosopher who cannot get a job anywhere. And it's not a car caricature. It's a, it's a sad reality. But uh, I think what, what you are referring to um, uh, is basically already reformed uh, this new type of humanities, this type of humanities that, that have already underwent these neoliberal reforms and are precisely catered toward the needs. So they, they broke, more, they, they burned all the bridges, let's say, with humanities in this Renaissance classical, maybe pathetic sense. And they are already tinkered towards the needs of creative industries, marketing, and so on. But these are not the same type of humanities, but it is true. In in, in that sense that they are not completely redundant. They, they, were, they, were, um, they appeared redundant in a certain time until, let's say, private investors, venture capitalists working in the field of education figure out, yeah, but why not? We can, we can use literate, uh, literate people that are good in expressing themselves with language, in advertising, and so on. But there, there is now a question if you can still, maybe, maybe it's pathetically posed, but um, I have to be short, whether you can speak about humanities or theory in that context anymore. Uh, I'll just add, uh, this obviously shows that, you know, we would need uh, for each panel at least two days of a conference and then go through all the concrete examples and, and then theory. And this is very important to clarify this, co this concept. And I'm really grateful to all of you, but also to add it to, to concrete struggles. And I think that many things has many things have been identified that we share across the Balkans, just to put that word here. The idea, however, is that we see that the issues are exactly the same. The situation is different, and as a colleague from Serbia said, it is different than in Croatia, where there's a growing movement, and, and I, I know it personally as well, and so the, each strategy should be different in, in each in each 
country, but also in, in different parts of the same country, as we know. Since, you know, it's not that, that, that we have only one elite that controls absolutely everything. You have these competing regional elites, especially quite interesting in the case of Istria. Uh, uh, so therefore, uh, I think it is important to address the fact that of that many of you mentioned of isolation and fragmentation of these struggles, that sometimes people identify themselves only one. Students only fight for student rights and then do not go even to bother, well, many of our friends do, but do, do not bother with the, with the, with the struggle for, the, for, for your, your urban space or with the worker struggles that is so far for them that they feel they are not threatened uh, by it and by the, problem, by the problems the workers have. So this is something that, that I think it's quite a simple, uh, uh, one of the simple sort of conclusions that are coming out of all these reports that, 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 that we got, that there is clearly a need to address commodification and, uh, uh, of, of natural resources, of common goods, and of public goods. It's process going on while we're speaking. And that the, there is a strategy that we can propose here. And many of you have been involved in proposing a specific strategies, like in Zagreb, the Academic Solidarity wrote a policy paper that will hopefully serve as a basis for, for a new law. This is a clear example that goes against the, the predominant dogma that left can only criticize, and, and, and it's only very good in theory, but cannot actually have quite clear policy proposal. I think that many of us and that we here have quite, quite uh, precise policy proposals in all these dom domains, but that we all agree, I hope, that, that this is a common struggle, that it's not only about the commons, but it's about how to, 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 to build a common struggle uh, uh, outside of these small circles where sometimes we feel you know, good or competent, but that we definitely have to expand. Um, thank you, Igor. Uh, I did not see any other raised hands at the moment. Uh, there was one. Okay, can we please have... Yes, uh, first, uh, uh, of course, we will have to, t to take time to develop the, the theoretical aspect, the political theoretical aspect. I want to stress two issues on that and then uh, some concrete proposals. Uh, two, two issues. Uh, when you speak and when we speak of uh, the trends towards privatization of public uh, service, it has to be related also to gender studies, the issue of women. And, uh, and this uh, also has to be articulated to the transformation of productive uh, labor force and how that is articulated to precarity where uh, women are a dominant uh, uh, component of the development of uh, wage, uh, wage uh, uh, workers with uh, precarious uh, statutes. And that is articulated to the going on to, well, the, to the uh, increasing charge in domestic field also. Uh, second aspect, um, uh, about the question of public and common, uh, uh, the, the, the notion. In France, we uh, also, um, or in the uh, struggles against uh, privatization of social services and so on, had a lot of discussion how to um, uh, avoid uh, either etatization or privatization kind of uh, binary uh, uh, trends. And the critical approach of uh, uh, state uh, uh, management of public services uh, was to be involved also in combination with the, criticization, the critique of uh, privatization and com commercialization. And we more and more use, also in front of the question of uh, money and uh, the question of controlling bank, uh, we more and more use uh, socialization uh, better than uh, etatization uh, or in order to link both aspects of uh, uh, management, social management and control of public service, and uh, also uh, uh, in commons. Last thing uh, is proposals. There, there, there was uh, in last week in France a con conference on health. And uh, I do believe that uh, in the Balkan, uh, the, the, the issue, like it has been said because of the past, the issue of public service, and uh, the idea that behind public service there are rights 
and the necessity of uh, uh, public involvement, uh, well, you call it state, I think it's better to say social control, but also public responsibility of states under control, is a, is a key issue. That's why I would uh, suggest that in the next future, uh, be organized here a conference at a European level on education, health, uh, water uh, issue, utilities, uh, and transport. So, I mean, those are really important fields where we can have common, uh, common uh, struggles and we should develop contacts. Okay. Any more um, comments from the audience? Uh, if, um, if not so, if I can only uh, briefly abuse uh, the position as a moderator to try and uh, maybe pose a question, I think. Um, so from what we've heard from, uh, from the panelists, some of them uh, directly addressed the, the question of public goods versus the commons, and then we've heard a critique of why using uh, this kind of idea of the public good um, is problematic. From what Primoz said, I mean, it kind of, it's a Samuelson typology which puts us in a, in a, in a t type of, you know, discourse which we maybe don't want to stay in. And also from some of the other inputs that I've heard, um, uh, we could also say that only talking about public and private um, keeps us in the dichotomy of state and market. We are all here saying, you know, that the market is going too far and that too many social domains are being marketized or uh, privatized or commercialized, commodified, there are all these terms. But uh, I think what we were trying to, to kind of, in, in the putting together of this panel, advance with the, with the concept of the commons is precisely to get out of this dichotomy and kind of to bring in the question of, you know, our citizen control, uh, democratic control, direct governance, and trying to, um, advocate for types of solidarity and trust which can build communities which will then directly be involved in the, um, in the management of both um, resources which are natural resources but also uh, other types of resources. And perhaps I, I now realize that I haven't really framed this <laughs> as a question, but if any of the panelists wants to come back to this, I think it was important for, for this discussion to not only go in the direction of um, explaining the difference between public goods and commons, but to advocate for the use of this vocabulary, either positively or, or criticize it. Yeah? Um, I like what you said uh, from a talk uh, from France uh, that, and this is the problem that we are having. I think we, we, this, this uh, critique has to be parallel, as you said. I think we have to fight uh, these uh, processes of privatization and commodification of public sector and services in the same time saying that we don't want just etatization of the, and when we say etatization then we have these elites who control the state, who then control the resources. But in the same time we, we have the critique as well of the way how these resources and how these services are managed and for whom and, and, and how. So we instead use this uh, term, so socialization, so getting resources back to the society, getting resources back to community, so they govern them, instead of uh, just uh, uh, opposing privatization for the benefit of the elites who control the state. Okay, if there are no more other comments, then I would ask uh, Tomislav, who had the difficult task of um, uh, drawing up joint positions, to try and uh, sum up. I will give you my microphone. Okay, so i try to do a general structure before I go um, person by person. So I think that um, there are four, four elements. Um, so first is um, the issue of commons is a perspective that comes uh, from struggles, um, struggles for conservation of uh, public uh, services, public resources, and commons. Um, it has to do with socialization and communization. Um, so it's also a perspective of enclosures. That's that's first thing I think. Um, second is that. Um, the concept of commons or the debate um, around this concept is signaling beyond 
the binary of public and private beyond the dichotomy of state and market. Um, third is the issue of um, organization that asks the question of uh, outreach, isolation uh, of action and fragmentation of action. Um, and this, this is from two perspectives. One is from um, the activists, from, from the groups, and the other one is from uh, the public or from the media. And uh, the third um, general category is, or fourth, sorry, is socialization or resocialization uh, of uh, goods. So let me just take out certain points from, um, from uh, what was said and, and then we can try to organize that. Um, or are there any, any, any objections to, to this structure uh, just for? Oh, okay, sorry. And the third one. So first one, um, commons is a perspective from struggles. Second one. Struggles. Second, commons as a concept signaling beyond the binary public and private, the dichotomy of state, okay, public market. The third one is uh, organization, outreach, isolation, fragmentation. And fourth one is socialization or resocialization. So, okay. Um, is it okay? So, uh, the f in the introduction, Daniela pointed out how the concept of the commons can help us criticize How's that going? Oh, okay. Okay. Offer vocabulary and provide ways of mobilizing. And provide ways of mobilizing. But Tom, is this your fifth point? Or does no, no, that's, it those are like, um, at a, yeah, well, we need to kind of, I'm sorry, I didn't manage to, to group them, but we can kind of group them. It belongs uh, evidently to the second, yeah. Oh, I have to see my presentation for my, sorry. Um, so um, from my presentation, there was, uh, I would point out the issue of sustainability and development. And another issue that was repeated throughout um, that of contextualized knowledge. And then I would assume of um, networking activist groups. Networking between the groups, yeah. And that is related to, to contextual knowledge or, or particular situations. Um, then moving on to Marco, he pointed out general lack of interest by the public, so this is evidently in the outreach. He 
he stressed that some resources, such as accessible education, is preconditioned for having a public debate on other issues. And he also pointed out um, a symmetry between local situations in Serbia and Croatia, and that there is an envy. I think this is an important point to um, discuss, and, and it's, it is somewhat related to how contextual the situations are and what the localized knowledges are. So how are you following? Is it okay? Oh, okay. Um, then moving on to Dušica. She drew our attention to there being um, non-essential and essential commons, so to say, uh, ones that relate to um, livelihood and, and subsistence and others that are more remote and that um, public doesn't see the relevance uh, of non-essential commons uh, or doesn't see it as important. So this is, I think, uh, it repeats the perspective that there is the problem of outreach, but from the public and the media, so it's somewhere there. And then she stressed that there is also uh, oftentimes a parochial mentality, uh, campanilismo, between the activist groups which I think belongs to the same group of problems of fragmentation and isolation. Excuse me, if I can, if I can shortly just interrupt. Um, I th even though this is very valuable, going through every speaker, I think what you did at the beginning was the super useful part, right? Where we basically tried to say, if you can, Adria, if you can uh, go back to the beginning of the document where we had um, because if we're trying to go towards what were the topics that everybody tried to address and what everybody tried to perhaps agree on, I think these four points would be key. If, if you disagree, then this is a chance to say so. And then perhaps we can have a minute of what people said, but that's not, I would say that's not uh, crucial okay. now. Igor or Tomislav, yeah, I would. Yeah, try and. Link them together. So uh, I think that those are uh, threads that were weaved through uh, all presentations and that they address um, uh, general aspects of um, getting the terminology right and understanding the issue. Um, they uh, also have to do, oh, sorry, now I don't see them. Um, then uh, second is that. Um, so that's the second. Uh, the third is that, that it comes from the issues of organization and what can we do uh, together. And third comes from the perspective of uh, what, what is it uh, that we act toward. So on, on the one hand, it is conservation, but how do we reframe uh, our action uh, and what its, what its goal? Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that I just started to go through minutes because they they weave the texture of, of the structure, yeah. but we can leave it at this and, and then add to that. Yeah. Perhaps perhaps um, if if not that's not a problem. Perhaps we can kind of work this out a little bit, you know, with the text uh, afterwards. But if the uh, group in this room uh, feels that this is a good representation of what we tried to say, then I, I think I would conclude here. I don't have the information on when the forum reconvenes after lunch. The forum will meet here again at 4.15, so you have an hour for, 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 for the lunch. But now please let's applaud to, to all of us. Thank you.